Good evening and welcome to Girlfriend Minute. I am Char. And I'm Pascal. How are you this evening, Pascal? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. It's Friday. Yes, it is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Yes, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. It's been a crazy few weeks at work, probably more like a crazy month. So uh, today mellowed out a little bit. So I was, yeah, yeah. It was a good yeah. day. <laughs> oh, well, good, good. Yeah, it's been it's been a rough week. So, um, yeah. but you know, um, today was actually pretty good, and I have some catering stuff to do for tomorrow, like double catering tomorrow. So, wow. Um, I have my team in the back. They're here with me tonight, and they are actually working hard to um, prep and get everything done. I have one at 1 p.m. that is a pickup and then another one for the party in the evening. So I'm actually pretty excited. I can wear clothes. My clothes. (laughs) Your clothes. My clothes. (laughs) I think I'm going to bring a a change of clothes with me in the morning so that I can change for the evening party. So at least I look like a boss, you know? Yeah, right. Very good. Very good. I'm, I am, I've been baking for my daughter. So um, she's asked me to bake some different types of bread. So I've been doing that. So I'll finish that up this weekend. I also have to bake for some stuff at work Monday. And uh, a friend, my old neighbor is taking me to a tour of houses down on Indian Rocks Beach tomorrow. Um, So I guess I'm going to go look at some houses. (laughs) And And that should be fun. What is it about? It's it's a Christmas tour. So I'm I'm assuming nice houses that are decked out. Sure. That's a lot of fun. So, and it's something about shopping or whatever, which I really have no interest in. So we're going to go do that. So I'm going to try to bake a loaf of bread in the morning and then go do that and then come back and do another loaf for my daughter. <laughs> I used to do that with my daughter, actually, when we were young, um, when she was young. Well, I was young, too, at the time, you know, <laughs> hey. But um, I used to put her in the car, actually, and we would just go around to all these different houses and we would just Mm -hmm. take a look at all the pretty, you know, decorations that they have up and stuff. And then now, like I want to say, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago or so, they started this thing at Hershey um, where they do a uh, what do they call it? A candy lane, I believe Mm -hmm. they call it. And so um you can pack up your car with whomever and they charge you per car and you go through and you drive with your car and you get to see all these pretty decorations that they have set out. And it's neat because it kind of takes you around and in the woods and stuff like that. So that's so, cool. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I'm excited for you. <laughs> yeah. It starts in the afternoon and it should be a few hours. And so it'll be a nice change of pace and then spending time with her. So we used to be neighbors and we were good friends. And uh, then I moved to Seminole and we see each other here and there, but we've always kept in touch. So she messaged me and said, hey, you want to go do this with me? I was like, sure. So (gasps) make some hot chocolate and take it with you. Well, I think it's going to be warm tomorrow. My AC's back on. We're cold for about 24 hours. (laughs) Okay, make it cold hot cold, cold, hot chocolate. Ice hot chocolate. Ice, yeah. What is that? I don't even know. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, you should. We actually had our first snowfall. Did you? Um, not yesterday, the day before yesterday. Yeah. And it was very tiny, only on the grass and stuff, so there was there was no need for shovels and all of that stuff. Um, but it was it was nice. I woke up and it was white. And I'm like, Oh my god and cold. <laughs> and cold. So I um I uh I like Beach Mountain, North Carolina. Oh, and okay. ski- ski beach and um so i have their high country webcams on right now and i have the base camera on my phone going right now of everyone's skiing and i haven't been in a long time and of course i'm a floridian so i i do okay skiing i mean i get on the lift get off the lift and get down the mountain without breaking anything and falling so you know (laughs) it's all good good. yeah Yeah, but i i've been watching that the last few days because they've had snow Oh, wow. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful. When you wake up and you see all that white, Mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know, it's something about it. Something about it. And I look at the mountain and the trees down the middle and used to rent a chalet on the one side there. And I remember the year that I took my whole family up there for Christmas and our kids were little and the kids were very worried about where Santa was going to find them. And (laughs) 
Yep. And uh, I mean, they were little and we went there. I took my mom and everything. And uh, mm-hmm. and we went to a Christmas tree farm and cut down a live tree. And the kids did the whole popcorn thing on the string with the cranberries and they made oh, the, the paper fun. chains in red and green and and that's how we decorate we took one strand of lice and said one strand of lice is all we're doing and uh they made all the other ornaments and stuff for the tree and um it was just beautiful we could ski out of the chalet and down the mountain get on the lift come back up and my one brother-in-law he could only go left oh wow funniest damn thing because he just disappeared into the trees <laughs> and a ski would pop off and I'd be like oh no I hope he's okay like a movie <laughs> yeah, it really was it was so funny he would just go from the top and yell watch out as he came down to everybody <laughs> he'd yell it um well he knew he That's knew funny. so the following year they went back and they put him in the kitty class and now he can go right as well oh well thank god <laughs> um, does he still call watch out I no know. i think he he's beyond that i mean he had no okay. control but he kept going he just he went yeah. up it and got down and he just kept <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or not, as long as I've been living up here in PA, I have not gone skiing. I'm just too chicken. I feel really? like I'm going to fall down and break something. And, you know, the older you get, the more likely I'm going to break something. You just got to make pizza. You got to make the pizza. You got to <laughs> make skis. the pizza. Okay. You go slow. You make the pizza. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I didn't take a class, but I got out there. So, um, I got really good at a decent, I didn't, not really yeah. good, but I, you know, for someone who's seen snow like twice in their life, I did pretty good. And, um, but you made very, stuff. very beautiful, memorable moments with your kids and then they uh, decorated and they made all the ornaments. How fun. Yes, it, it was, it was yeah. a lot of fun and Santa did find them. Of course. And all was well. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> they were surprised on Christmas day <laughs> when they got well, their presents. Mine was the youngest. Brooke was the youngest. She was five. So it was a great concern. Yes. You know, course. I put her in the little kid's ski class and she was coming down the big lift, going up the big lift and coming down the big slope wow. at age five with, you know, they don't give them poles at that age. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't watch. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they're resilient at that age anyway. They don't really care. They have no fear factor. Yeah, she and still doesn't, like, by the way. <laughs> does she really? She doesn't really. No, no. Now she snowboards, but, you know, she rode that motorcycle for a few years, so she doesn't. Oh, yeah. You know, I drive her over the Gandhi Bridge, and she's like, this is where I would top my motorcycle out at. And I'm like, don't even talk to me. Uh, right. Don't even. Don't tell me anything. Just don't talk. <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> oh, you should see some of the videos she sent me. Oh, no. After she's, I just got done doing this. I'm like, are you just trying to kill me from a distance? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my God, that's oh. crazy. Yeah, she has no fear. She yeah, has no that's fear. Crazy. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was it was a good time. Every time I've been up there, I haven't been up there in quite a while. Probably, yeah. I don't know, four years, five years. I don't know, something like that. So, yeah, we had a good time. So. That's good kind of makes me miss it when I see all that snow and makes me want to try to get the skis back on and see if I break anything or not. Yes, I see. I, it is. It's a lot of fun to uh, to do that. So always make memorable moments with your family for sure. Yeah, a lot of fun. So are you ready for Santa? I'm not ready for Santa just yet. <laughs> I'm never ready for Santa. I'm always the last minute person. We had this discussion last episode. I know. I was just checking on you. <laughs> yeah, no. No. Last episodes definitely. Yeah. I just I don't know why. I, it's not a matter of procrastinating. I just feel like I need to find a good gift, I guess. Yeah. And what is a good gift? I have no freaking idea. <laughs> You know, I don't know either. Sometimes I just look at a person and I see something like that's it. And other times I struggle. So, yeah, yeah, I think it depends. So the question asked this week on Facebook is what is your biggest regret? So what is your biggest regret? Um, I think my biggest regret would probably be that, um, I didn't have the courage to, live my true life, live the life that I wanted to live. Um, I always felt like I was living the life for others. 
So I think that one is probably, you know, I've always done what's expected of me, basically. So I never got a chance to live like my true, true life. But, um, you know, I get, it makes me who I am, I guess. So all is well. <laughs> I'm not saying it in a bad way. No, no. Yeah, I know what it's you mean. Not in a bad way. But, you know, I just wish that I would have not been worried about others so much about the expectations of me mm -hmm. rather than just being me or being a kid, you know, growing up quicker. Uh, learning more responsibility at a young age, it's a lot for a kid. You know, I couldn't couldn't be just a kid. So, you know, it's it, it was hard, but you know, like I said, it, it is what made me who I am today. So, um, that's that's one of regrets. I do have another one though. Another regret would be um, that uh, I worked a lot that I work. You, you so, still work a lot. I do work a lot now. Yeah. Um, but when my daughter was little, you know, mm -hmm. where I can, um, spend more time with her and, uh, be there. I was there for like, you know, school things and stuff like that. And as she got older, you know, um, I wish I would have been there more for her teenage years at home. Um, but I was working, so, and plus I was putting her through uh, gymnastics and activities that she would like to do, you know. But I think, yeah. to be honest with you, she did express one time that she probably would have just rather had me there instead of doing all those activities. So that's probably a small Well, way. and that's and that's interesting because as a kid, that's all they know is what they want to do. Right. She's grown up now. She can look back. Right. And realize what you sacrificed for her to do those things and what that sacrifice. Yeah. So, you know, it's again, live and learn. Yes. You know, yes, live and learn. Yeah. What about you? Oh, pretty much the same. I always did what was expected of me. Um, I definitely would have not gotten married at a young age. Um, and with that being said, I love my children. <laughs> Yeah, well, of course. And it's, and it's not, it's just when you sit back and I look at where I'm at now and what I really want and see how I got to where I'm at now, I, I regret, I have regrets, you know, I wish that I was confident in myself. I wish that I didn't feel like my mother had, was pawning me off on someone. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I stood on my own two feet and did my own thing and lived my life for me. I wasn't out partying with everyone in high school. Yeah. I didn't do any of that. Neither you know, did I. yeah. I mean, it just, it, it was, you know, just wasn't really, I know I went out here and there and I went to some parties. Don't get me wrong, but it was far and few between. I, it wasn't like stuff I did weekly. I, I don't know. I just wish I had done things differently at that age, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So well, what did some people comment on, uh, are they similar to ours a little bit? Some are different. Well, I think for women, it's pretty similar. I mean, one uh, person wrote, we are a direct reflection of our daily decisions all through our life. Focusing on regrets feels like a waste of time. Well, no one's focusing on them. We're discussing it. Yeah, that's it. We're not. We all look back and reflect on our lives and the choices we made. Of that's course. all this is. It's not focusing. I don't dwell out on it every day. It's not like. No, it's, it's unhealthy to do that. If you're going to dwell on it like that every day, it's very unhealthy to do that. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it, this is just a discussion just to see, you know, if we have any uh, similarities between other women. So I think I think there's a lot of doing what was expected because I still think that that was drilled into so many uh, into our parents generation, females heads. You know, you do what's expected of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Do. Um, being mean for no good reason. Yeah. That's a yeah. good one. Yeah. Yeah. That still happens now as yet. It with does. Younger kids. Yeah. Yeah. They're Even starting... as adults, it happens. Mm -hmm. Like just some people will just be mean out of nowhere for no reason. Yeah. yeah. It, it does, you know, um, getting a master's degree when I was childish childless <laughs> childless 
I was like, wait a minute, what's happening? Yeah, I don't know what's happening. It's been, I'm tired too. Okay, been home <laughs> since 1999. It would have been easier and might have been useful if I had returned, if I had um, returned to school and done my master's degree before I decide to go back to the job market soon. So basically what she's saying is while being at home, she'd have finished her master's degree because she's been home since 1999 and she might be returning to the job market soon. So she's oh, still wow, home with her, her firstborn child. Now? That's what it, she said. Oh, okay. Well, it's time to get out, honey. Let's go. Get on out. Uh, not okay. <laughs> right. Do things for yourself now. It is okay. And there's nothing wrong to be home with your with your. Sister. And, and with that being said, we don't know any of the circumstances or no, anything of either. Not. I was home. My gosh, I was home with my. I guess my mom and dad could say <laughs> they were home. <laughs> they were home with me. Yeah. <laughs> for such a long time right. <laughs> so uh, yeah I guess they can but it's not like they were hindered from doing whatever they wanted to do either so yeah you know so if if that's hindering you or or um you have regrets about doing that then yeah you need to get on that wagon jump out go live your life and it's okay Nothing's wrong with that, but no. um, if it's just, we all if, do what we have to do at the time. It's the yeah. best decision at the time with what information we have, you know of what I'm course. saying? It, 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 yes. it just, it is what it is. So um, someone posted not investing sooner and not traveling to different places when I was younger. Okay. That's true because you don't know what's going to happen. You can be in the best of health. Yes. And something tragic can happen, unfortunately. Yeah, you got to travel while you're um, able to. Mm -hmm. doesn't have to be necessarily you being a young person to travel, but, um, you know, travel when you can. Make it, make it a point to go somewhere, you know, every year. It doesn't have to be extravagant. It doesn't have to be all out. But just make it a point to go somewhere. Go experience life. You don't have, you only have one life. So. You only have one life, yes. Um, this person posted leaving college at the start of my junior year. I should have stuck it out, but this regret led to my children. So I'm assuming there was some kind of relationship. There were really no more specifics on that, but I would assume okay. some kind of relationship came into play. Right. And they made the choice to leave college and follow their heart, I would assume. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, another person posted 22 years ago, dating her now ex-husband and another guy. It came to a point where I had to choose one and leave the other, and I chose wrong. Oh, oh man, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. Um, well, what are you going to do? Well, you made you a know, choice again. You made a choice, with, yeah. What you every, thought was the best decision, and now that he's your ex and you're looking back, you're like, ah, maybe the other guy. But what if you had chosen <laughs> the other guy and yeah, you well, ended up divorced happened. then? You know what I'm saying? You just don't know. I mean, no. you can't beat yourself up too much and dwell no, on these can't. things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't dwell. <laughs> no, but yeah, if you if you chose, everybody has a decision to make at some point in time. And whether it's the right or the wrong decision, I mean, you don't know. What if you did go with that other guy and it turned out to be worse? Right. Yeah, you have no idea. So whatever led you to where you are is where you're supposed to be. That's what I believe. And then the next question is that other guy, do you know where he is? Is he single? And are yes. you talking to him? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 Where's just, he at? No. Yep. <laughs> right. Just curious. <laughs> yeah. Right. And where where is his life now? What did yeah. he do in his life? Has right. he accomplished anything in his life? You know, so you can't it's it's like an open ended, I guess. I would thing. imagine knowing her that she probably has the answers to those questions. <laughs> oh, probably, yeah. yeah. As I would. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I would do my investigation too. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Right. So, I would find him and find out what he's doing and how many kids he has and where's he at. Right. right. 
What's going yeah. on? What's going um, on with you? Someone else posted, not realizing how much I like medicine and going to college to become a PA, physician assistant, or an MD. Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's a very good one, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's never too late sometimes. I mean, you don't have to necessarily become an MD because I know that's, you know, years and years and years, but it's never too late to accomplish, you know, what you started or what you like um, well I guess that depends at what's going on in your life at the time yeah to make that decision to you know you gotta get all those prerequisites out of the way <laughs> you gotta get accepted to a program it's it's a process of course. it is yes yeah. it's so you're giving up still how many years what six well, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't if you know have if, no prerequisites and, and you yeah. got to do the prerequisites. So that's what, three-ish? Yeah. Uh, well, and then the three-ish for PA? Yeah, but nowadays you can actually, like, take a test and, and uh, I don't know what you call that, where they take a um, test and you can kind of pass it. That's what they do up here. Like, oh. for example, for your prerequisite. If you have to have a, a certain math class or a certain whatever, you can go and actually sit for the test. And if you pass it with an 80% or better, then that's it. You don't have to take the, you, you know, you finish. But what it. if you have you nothing? What if you have nothing? Well, if you have nothing, then yeah, of course. You got to start from ground zero. Yeah. Then it's going to take you two, two years it's for gonna prerequisites. Take, yeah. You know, yeah. and then just depending on how quickly you do it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got to get accepted to a program. You got to do the program. Oh, of course. Yeah, you do. Actually, when we were in high school, believe it or not, because I wanted to be a medical physician, um, that was my dream when I, I grew up. And I'm not that, by the way. So, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. <laughs> right. I, I would not but, want to be in today's day and age. I yeah, just... but believe it or not, I actually had to put in an application. We had a program. It's, it was called, oh, geez, I forget. But it was some medical, it started with an O, um, occupational health. I think it mm -hmm. was called occupational health. And you actually had to put in an application, go for an interview, and it had to be accepted in that program. And then it would give you two hours off from school so mm -hmm. that you can go to work in wherever, in the hospital. I worked at Largo Medical Center, actually. Did I you? Went, yep. And I delivered pharmacy um, pharmaceuticals to all the flooring and all that stuff. So I used to work over there for a little bit. Oh, my sister, when she was in high school, used to be a candy striper at Largo Med. Oh, wow. A volunteer. There's a news. I have a newspaper article on her. From oh, it. get out. Mm hmm. And oh, wow. where I work is right next door to Largo Med. Uh, yes. Yeah. Because I just sometimes walk over to the hospital to get food. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, they're now calling themselves HCA. They changed all their signage. And oh, I still gosh. call them Largo Med because that's that's what you're used to. That's what we've known our whole lives. So, yeah. So, but, yeah. So, you know. I mean, if, you know, but that person it, can actually look into it and start from, you know, the bottom, if, if they choose to do it. I mean, it's not necessary, obviously. If they're in a particular place in their life right now where they're happy and they're happy with their job, that doesn't mean that they have to necessarily go and do that. Um, but if there's an option for them to do it, then, yeah, go for it. Well, yeah, I think they're content in their job. Um, but if you're starting over from ground zero, you got to look at the commitment, the hour, yeah. hours of commitment to doing that and trying to get it done. So, it is you a know, big commitment. yeah, you know, I enjoy medicine, too, but I definitely would not want to be practicing in this day and age. Yeah, it's tough. It's just it's very different now. It is. It really it is. is. Very different. You it know, is. it's crazy, you know. Um, someone posted not finishing college or becoming the lawyer that I wanted to be. Um, I also realized that I loved accounting. I just wish I had made better decisions all the way around. Okay, well, there you go again, like you said, about the prerequisites and stuff. But accounting is not that, not that hard, actually. I mean, I don't want to say not that hard because I did it, but I had prerequisites. 
yeah. I did accounting and I, I graduated with a bachelor's in accounting, but I had already put in my prerequisites, so I didn't really have to start from scratch. So, um, I don't know. She can, <laughs> she can do the H and R block thing. You know, they, if she likes accounting that much, they take people. I did it. I took a class over there and that you can actually work over there while they teach mm -hmm. you. It's like a $300 class or something up here. I don't know what it is down there, but uh, if she likes accounting that much, that's another, another way to kind of get into it. Yeah. I mean, I don't really think she has the means to right now. Okay. So I just, I think it's something she's looking back at her life. Uh, she's had some medical issues and she's got time to reflect back. I and see. Yeah. sometimes when you have time to reflect back, that can also be an enemy. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you definitely. So. Always think of the positive when you're reflecting back so it doesn't take you down. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, she could do bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, you don't need a license to do bookkeeping. Yeah. So I don't know what she's thinking about or looking into, but she definitely should. Yeah. You know, she yeah. definitely should. You know, um, again, it's just thinking about, you know, again, we're here where we're at it, based on the path we chose. So, yeah, definitely. I wouldn't trade my children in. Oh, I guess that depends on the day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right? No. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, neither would I. I mean, yeah. if we didn't move up here, you know, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have had my child, you know, who knows? Nobody you think knows. about that, but we do I think do. about that. We I think do. about that stuff. Had I not done this, you know. Yeah, would uh, I have accomplished this or gone through that? So, I had yeah. a conversation with my daughter once. I don't even remember how it got started or what it, how it got to where it was. And she's like, yeah, but you wouldn't have had me or James. I'm said, I said, I would have had you and James. You just, you know, look a little different, sound a little different. <laughs> you see she's different like, people. She's like, nice, real nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but it's the truth. It's I mean, true. think about it. Yeah. <laughs> think about it. I mean, oh. but she caught on. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I think it was like a middle school conversation or something. Oh. <laughs> She was like, That's real nice, cute. mom, real nice. <laughs> it's cute, though. I like it, yeah. It's... I thought it was. She, yeah. wasn't, she was a little less amused. She wasn't with happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It's funny because, uh, you know, at some point she has complained about her name. Her name is Brooke. And I've had that name picked out since I was like 12 years old. Oh, wow. I just, I, I don't know why. It. I, you know, I don't really, you know, other people were like, you can name her this, you can name her that. I'm like, someone said Sharon. I was like, Sharon? Sharon? <laughs> what year are you? <laughs> can you imagine if you looked at her now and be like, Sharon? Sharon? <laughs> <laughs> I actually think about that. I look at her, I'm like, she's not a Sharon. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So, like you a know. Karen or a Linda. <laughs> like, come on. You know, so, yeah. So, she likes telling people that my mom knew my name when she was like 12, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but yeah. it's true. It, it that, that was it. That was, that was it for me. So sometimes when you know it, it's good, that's it. It is, it is what yeah. it is. I yeah. think, I think she has a really good name. I, I don't see anything wrong with Brooke. It's very unique. There's not many people that have it. So that makes her unique. Yeah. You know? I want like something a little, well, my name's really unique. <laughs> yeah. Just like your name. So. You know, um, but yeah, I wanted her to have a little different name, but not so different that people would be like, it's like my name. I mean, you know how many people I call and I leave a voicemail like this is Char calling you in regards to blah, 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 blah. And they call back. They're like, Charlotte, Charlene. I'm like, yes, I don't tell them. Like, <laughs> no, you can't. They just assume it's Charlotte or Charlene. Yeah. Do I look like a Charlotte or Charlene? No, I'm sorry. No, I look like a Char. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you do. And it's funny because they, you know, when, when parents are naming their children, you mm -hmm. don't realize that they actually live up to that name. It, you it's do. like crazy. Yeah, it's it crazy. It's you crazy. do. And so my sisters and I all have unusual names, Camille, Colette, Charmaine. They all start with C. We all have the middle name Marie because it's the Italian thing. Yes. And they're all like French names, even though we're not French. So I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> 
Well, you're all C's, all of but you. We're all C's. And then, you know, when I would say to my mom, why are we all C's? She's like, that wasn't intentional. I'm like, oh, please. And she swore that to the day she died. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it had uh, to be intentional. At I mean, there. come on. You just yeah. picked Camille out of the air and Colette right. out of the air and Charmaine out of the air. <laughs> it was right. not intentional. <laughs> well, Charmaine is an Italian, though. A lot of people have Charmaine as an Italian name too. Yeah. So I yeah. think, well, I met that. another Charmaine. I did. I posted a picture of her. She's uh, 82. Oh, <laughs> I know. I heard her talking to someone at work and she's like, my name is Charmaine. I was like, what? So I had to go look because yes. I was like, what? And, um, and, uh, she's Sicilian. See her middle name's Marie. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> it was meant to be. I, I took a picture with her. She's like, you go to Italy. You may not want to come back. Next time I go, I may not come back. She's just like, you need to go. And that's like top of my priority. I have a few yeah. things I'm doing. A friend of mine messaged me yesterday. He's like, I finally got my kids dual citizenship for Italy. He got his oh, last wow. year. I got to finish mine up. I'm doing that in January and I'm doing my passport in January. Um, But yeah, it was just funny. Another Charmaine Marie. I was just like, get out of here. <laughs> right. How crazy is that? <laughs> well, believe yeah. it or not, I hadn't, um, I hadn't heard your name in a while. And there was a girl, um, that it wasn't in here. I don't remember where it was, but I heard her name as Charmaine and I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's the second Charmaine that I like ran into. Like I, I, don't really know many of them. Yeah. So yeah, your name is very unique, but I yeah. love it. Yeah. And people now tell me nowadays, oh, your name is Char. I'm like, yes. They're like, just Char. I'm like, yes. Yes, that's enough. <laughs> they're like, that's very cool. Every now and then, depending on the conversation, I'll say, no, my, my full name is Charmaine. They're like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. I'm like, thank you. Hated it when I was a kid because it's a mile yeah. long. Yeah. <laughs> but you love it when you get older, though. It's nice. It's I nice actually thing. used to tell myself when I turn 18, I'm legally shorting my, shortening my name to Char. <laughs> I did. I swore did really? to myself, I'm going to go do it. And then I had a case of the guilt. Yes. My mom would be insulted. Yes. So I didn't do it. Yeah. It's okay. You could still tell people you're sure and that's it. Good enough. And, and now I'm glad I didn't do it. See? So I had to go, then I had to go back to court and change it back to my legal name. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was I like you. It. I didn't care about my name either when I was younger. I was like, Mom, why did you have to name me Pascal? Like, couldn't you name me something else? She was like, well, you were, you were the only Pascal at the time. Nobody had your name over there in the area and stuff like that. Now there's a lot in Lebanon over there. Yeah. There's a lot of Pascals, but it's uh, like you, it's a French name. So, um, and, uh, but I love it now. And then I was <laughs> like, I was in Medicare, I was on the phones and I was on the, and can you imagine saying hi, like you? Yeah. Hi, my name is Pascal. How can I help you? <laughs> They're like, what? Patty? <laughs> oh, <No. laughs> right. Patty? <laughs> Where did you get Patty from? Or, you know, I just say Char and they're like, oh, hi, Charlene. I'm like, hi. <laughs> No, but then all I, I didn't could say think Charlene. Of, I just said Char. Yeah. <laughs> Four letters. And they heard lean. And they after heard that. Lean. They heard yeah. that. Or share. Share? No. Share. Share. It's and I spell it C H A R and they're like share. I'm like, no. Is there an no. E there? Right. Is there exactly. no e? A. Well, and <laughs> plus if they're they're over what, sixty years old, they better know how to spell share. <laughs> right. I am yes. so, yeah, it just baffles me, but yeah, it's funny. I, I get a kick out of it truly, but yeah. yeah, people are funny. And by the way, I have a patient who, um, has a doctor down in the Florida keys and she comes to us to do her imaging, believe it or not in Largo, oh, wow. Florida, even though she lives in key Largo, she comes to us and uh, she just makes a trip of it and visits her sister who lives in Largo. And the doctor's name is Pascal. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, he either mm -hmm. he must be French or he's Italian, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> one or the other, right? Yeah. So yeah, so I see that. I think of you because I'm like, you know, I oh. I don't see it. You, you know, know. It's not and very he, often. You no, know. and here is this doctor at this clinic down there in Key Largo that that's their first name. 
That's crazy. I only yeah. ever met another Pascal in the United States when um, the one lady in here, I was working as a waitress, the one lady in here came in, was ordering food, and I don't know how we got to, sub to the subject about names or anything like that, or maybe it's because I said, oh, hi, I'm Pascal, I'll be your waitress for this evening, and then she just kind of looked up at me, and then I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, well, my <laughs> name's Pascal. I said, get out of here. Yeah, I know. It's so it's shocking. Like, it is. You know, if there's a Jeff or a John or... James yeah. or I don't know a Jennifer or Megan's pretty common too. It went through the whole yeah. Megan phase and I don't know. And I have two Kathys, three Kathys that work right by me and you yeah. know so the different generations, different phases of names I sure. guess. But it's it's funny. But you never hear mine and they automatically assume Charlene or Charlotte. Yes. And I just keep thinking I I don't uh. look like a Charlene or Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> what year was that? <laughs> Gonna need to look that up. <laughs> Clarification. Because I'm only this age. Right. And she's and Charlotte is, was wasn't one of the names. No, 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 no. So something I kind of did that was a little um, interesting was I I posted on our, our Facebook page too. I posted on my personal page and the girlfriend page and then the sassy page. Mm -hmm. And um, I posted a few things. I posted, what is your new year's resolution? And not the typical lose weight. What would you like to change for yourself? When, why do you think it's so hard for uh, new year's resolutions to stick? So what is your new year's resolution? I think my new year's resolution would be to take care of myself more. Mm -hmm. to be more um, and it has nothing to do with being selfish I'm no. not trying to be selfish but I think if I have more of a mindset to take care of me I will be in a better mindset to be around others mm -hmm. um, so I think that's my new year's resolution for myself is to take care of me I think that's great about as you, you should well, kind of the same thing. The things that I've been wanting to do, I've actually been making a list. And I'm going to just start checking them off one by one. Oh. As okay. I do them, it's going to be, you know, I'm doing it for me, stuff yeah. I want to do. So I need to finish my application for dual citizenship. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the whole passport thing because I'm, I'm someone's going to Italy. <laughs> yeah. <who>. Yeah. <laughs> Something's happening. Something's happening. Yeah, going no. down. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. You know, but again, that's for me. Yes. Um, it has nothing to do with anyone else. It's uh, the whole dual citizenship has been on my mind for many, many years. I don't know why. I don't know what the attraction is to all of that but it's just I think it's history for you there's a lot of history in there for you it's I think I think it is I had someone say to me too why would you want to give up your American citizenship and I just looked at him I said so when I say dual <laughs> stop it <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the sarcasm in me. This person no, I can talk I'm to serious. like that. I'm yeah. like dual. They're like, oh, they're because they're like, why would you renounce? I said, I'm not renouncing nothing. But you have like the crown of America on top of your head. <laughs> and then I would you like just renounce one. your throne. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no. So um, well, maybe they they weren't aware. They need to be more knowledgeable. So there you go. So there's one thing I'm going to do for myself that you know about that I'm not saying publicly. Yes. <laughs> um, there's a course I'm going to do and take for myself yes. and uh, finish it. And so that those are the three top things. Um, why do I think some resolutions are hard to stick to? Well, if you're talking about weight loss, as most people talk about, it's a lifestyle change. Correct. You can't eat good for six weeks. And then and eat bad for 20. Yeah. <laughs> True story. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. No, yeah. You can't. It just somehow doesn't work. You know, everyone's like, I have cheat days and stuff. For me, a cheat day is I may eat a bad meal. Yeah. So for me, a bad meal is I'll do a burger and grant I'll make my burger out of like organic meat, but I will have the bun and the French fries too. <laughs> sure. That's, that's how I cheat. It's not I eat cheat all day long. I'm eating a bag of potato chips. I'm going to eat this chocolate bar or anything like that. I can't do that. My system doesn't allow it anymore. But um, 
but I did in the past. <laughs> well, and that's but, funny though, when you say cheat day too, like when you get used to a routine and mm -hmm. you get you, because you know, losing weight, you have to work at it. It's not something that's magically going to happen. No. And like you said, it takes effort. You have to prep your food and make sure that you know what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you get hungry, you're going to be searching and looking for the bad things to eat. Yep. When you so, get bored. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when you get bored. My God, yeah. the munchies start to happen. Yep. So, you know, so. and, and even on your cheat day, like you had said, it's really not technically a cheat day. So you're, you still kind of still stick to your not eating a ton of food or the chocolate bar or the piece of cake or the pizza or ice cream or this or that or whatever. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I have ice cream rarely, Yes, yeah. but I prefer Should. not to feel like that. You know, I just, right. I prefer to feel healthier and lighter in general. So it's, Should. yeah. So I think that's why new year's resolutions of losing weight are so hard to stick to is everyone's like, you got to have a cheat day. Well, you can't deprive yourself of the things you enjoy. Not at all. But you do have to do it in moderation and you do have to, it can't be the dominant factor. It has to be the lesser. <laughs> well, and that's you the know. key moderation. That's yeah. The key. yeah. You know, so um, someone else put, when I asked that question, put me first a little more. It's hard because change is hard when you've done something your whole life. And that's very true. And I think you deal with it. And I know I've dealt with it. And I know a few of my other friends, when I started talking about things, because I used to never talk about anything like this before. I used to keep everything just to myself and just thought I was insane all the time. And, um, how many of my friends have said that, you know, you stop doing what you're doing for the kids. You put the kids first, you do for sure. the family first. And I've done that for years, but no one puts me first. No one checks on me. So guess what? You're going <laughs> to check on yourself. <laughs> the tides have turned. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, rightfully so. I mean, you deserve it. You know, you've yeah. spent all that time doing what you needed to do for everyone else. And it's your turn. So uh, a friend of mine since middle school, uh, she will be moving to Boone, North Carolina. They're currently building their dream house in Boone, North Carolina. And I mean, building it themselves. Oh, and wow. I've been watching this thing go up week by week. And it's amazing to me. And I'm so happy for her and excited for her. But I'm used to going to Boone and Banner Elk and Linville Falls and Beach Mountain's my favorite place up there. Um, and so I know exactly what area she's going to be in. And she put, uh, for me, it's delving more into my spiritual path and start creating things that I've always wanted to. In the past, life was always happening. I think that's true for all of us. Life always happens and we get sidetracked. Sure. Uh, we have good intentions for ourselves and we don't follow through because we're busy taking care of everything else. I've never been good with multitasking many things and taking care of the needs of the family always came first. Granted, I have a wonderful husband who supports me in whatever I want to do, but I would I would either feel guilty if I took too much time for myself or I would get distracted by other things going on. I think that's common. We all have those guilty moments. Definitely. We're taken away from the family, you know. Life is changing for me this year to where I have no more excuses. And she put excuses in parentheses. Uh, her kids are grown too now as well. So that okay. makes certain things easier. And thank you, Shar, for creating this group and podcast. Just started listening and I remember some of the stuff from childhood. So she was there for me with some of the divorce stuff with my parents. Okay. And she would go with me on visitation. Part of me taking friends to visitation was it made me feel safer because my dad was violent. Sure. He was a scary man. So to me, there was safety in numbers. Sure. And he hated that I you brought people. That? Yeah. Which led because him to stop did. seeing me, which is what my attorney said would happen. And it, it, I don't know how it long did. it took. And it did. He just said, if I'm seeing, am I seeing you? I was at her house when I got, the, when I called them to verify pickup time. And I was 10. And he's like, am I seeing you or you and your friends? I said, well, I'm bringing my friends. And he goes, well, then I'm not picking you up. Um, yeah. Uh, when you're ready to just see me by yourself, you can call me. And I said, okay, well, take care. And I hung up and I immediately called my mom so she could tell the attorney what he had just said. And that was the last time I saw him. So until he died. So, um, yeah, so we had a little bit of back and forth about that. And um, hold on, there's more. There's always more. <laughs> And someone else said the same thing. 
as far as being, it's a life change. It's not just, you know. It is. When you get used to something and you're used to. It's a lifestyle, not a resolution. So, yes, it is. Uh, Continue to make myself a priority. Keep going to the gym. Focus on health more consistently, especially my mental health. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Stay single. No more liars, cheaters, and abusers. (laughs) Oh, my God. But sadly, I understand what she's saying. No, me too. So, I get it. Uh, I'm not get... laughing at her comment. I'm laughing no. that she was just, I, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so I'm being very bur- blunt about I'm it. I'm very yeah. blunt and honest, and here it is, and I totally, I totally get that. I totally no, I, get I, that. I totally feel that one. That one I understand a lot. Um, and then a guy friend posted, people declare unrealistic goals, a trait that is sadly too common these days. Well, I think that's always been kind of a trait, not just these days. I think everyone has this bigger picture in their brain and yeah. they skip some of the steps to get there. Um, my resolution is to maintain a smoke free life, pursue my photography business, love every day with happiness and humor and be the best me, father, grandfather, friend, boyfriend and person that I can be. There you go. That's a good one. I hope you do it all. I, I, I truly so do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, another friend, life goes, does have a problem with getting in the way of plans, of course. Life never goes as we planned it out. 2024 will be will be just to maximize the happiness in my household, reduce everyone's stress and improve health, not necessarily in the weight loss situation, but medical situation. And just uh, for pertaining to me, have more of a personal life. And that's a hard one. Oh, yeah, definitely. So I think some of her children have moved back home and there's huge adjustments and there's changes the dynamics once again, especially when they're older children. So um, it's an adjustment for everybody. Um, Someone put working toward freedom. I'm not really sure what they mean by freedom. Maybe freedom from like work, work not, from yeah. their relationship, from freedom what? from yeah. what? So I, you know, but maybe just in general, I don't know. Learning to say no, standing up for myself professionally, paying off more debt, be intentional with my family and friend time, and losing a few pounds couldn't hurt. (laughs) True. (laughs) Um, Right? For all of us, being happy, helping my friends and family to be happy. Uh, Like someone above said, maintaining my smoke-free, exercising, and I don't have to like it, lifestyle. <laughs> is that gonna be hard to stick to though you know, right like, like a yeah. little bit of it <laughs> and I responded that I'm definitely happy you're taking better care of myself always improving don't always like it that's for sure she is oh yeah. what you don't like going to the gym either I'm like nope no. <laughs> I don't I don't yeah. I do a Pilates class that's very different than the gym it's well, a specific it the build, the whole, everything I have, there's 12 reformer tables in there and that's all you're doing is Pilates. It's not a, I, you know, go to the gym. I feel like it's a meat market. Everyone's watching. I just, it doesn't, you know, yeah, I just, it's not for me. Um, uh, someone posted, get my blood sugar under control. Yes. That's very important. (laughs) You need to do that. That's like number uno, you know, Um, better health. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone put rather than a resolution, I'm setting intentions, things I can do to work on myself. An example would be not being quick to to anger or judgment with my spouse. My intention would be to listen before I respond rather than listening to respond. Believe it or not, when you listen to respond, you aren't really hearing the other person. Yeah, very true. And it is very true. Yes, it is very true. And then uh, someone posted a link and it's called my one word, change your life with just one word. So I'm assuming that's a one word a day deal. Maybe, maybe Um, I didn't really look at it, but um, change your life with one word. So it could be anything. I think change your life with one word. I mean, it could be a good word. It could be a bad word. I don't know. Right. Right. And then because of some of of the Christmas theme, I asked, you know, New Year's resolution, we're at the holiday time. And I was just kind of curious what people are thinking. Share a memorable gift opening moment from your childhood. So what is your memorable gift opening moment from your childhood, Pascal? Oh, man, let me see. Let me think. What is that? 
know. That's a good question. I think one of one that I can remember when I was younger would probably be um, uh, the first um, TV console kit that I played. I think I was like 10 or 11 years old when I got that. Atari. I know probably a lot of people don't know about it, but I love it. <laughs> I used to, that was, that was something for us because we, I never really got, you know, that many toys like that to play with. So mm -hmm. for my father to surprise us with that, uh, opening our gifts with that was very happy moment. So. Yeah. Uh, so people posted, uh, my Barbie dream house and public Publix truck. I could enjoy the best of both worlds. Well, ah. I, too, I too was a tomboy. However, Barbie was not my favorite fan. I yeah. was vice versa <laughs> as I gave haircuts <laughs> to them all. Yes. My sister was the one that had the Barbies. I didn't really have the Barbies. So. I had a few and then I inherited my sisters and then I made them all look alike. So, you know, oh, it is what it is. Anyway. You know. yeah. um, my they all niece, look alike anyway. Well, they do, especially when you bob their hair. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, they look different because they found out that there are different people in this world. So, um, but right. yeah. Um, my niece posted the only one I got is when I was a teenager and I got a surfboard. I have no memory of my ch Christmas as a child <laughs> except that <laughs> surfboard. Oh, no. Uh, a friend of ours posted when I was in fifth grade. I think my parents had run out of ideas for me. On Christmas morning, they asked me to pick up the phone and dial a number. When I did, I could hear a phone ringing across the house. It was coming from my room. They told me Santa got me my own phone in my bedroom. This was when I was sure where Santa, I was sure they were Santa because my dad worked for the phone company. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first of my friends to get a phone in my room, but I was too young for anyone to call me yet. Now, I got a phone in my room when I was in high school. I had my yeah. own line. Um, another per yeah, uh, another friend put, the, um, I paid for it. Oh, okay. I, I paid for it. Yep, I used to babysit and stuff. I paid for it. Uh, this year, my brother got, uh, the year my brother got a Nintendo, we got up really early and we were allowed to open one gift from our stockings. My brother opened the Nintendo and I picked out one of his games. Not sure how the the, the, the and that Nintendo was, the was end in of the Christmas in the stocking, right? That was the end of Christmas. And that was the end of Christmas. This, <laughs> no specifications on the gift to choose to open had your name on it. We played for hours before my parents got up. So that was the <laughs> oh, wise parents just yes. put this out there they'll open it out of curiosity and exactly. we're good to go <laughs> yes. Yes. uh someone put it was a cabbage patch kid i was the only one the only one thing i wanted and every kid my age wanted after all the gifts were open my mom told me she heard santa in her closet there was a cabbage patch kid in a basket that my mom had sewn a liner into it was perfect oh um, uh, then someone put, especially the came going on to Black Friday at Kmart, trading a boy for a second girl. So someone else with a Cabbage Patch Kid traded one for another one. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was kind of fun. What about you? What's your memorable Christmas? So I have a few from different ages and I, and it's real spotty. It's like, I remember wanting the metal slinky when it came out and I was really little because yeah. my parents, my parents were still married. And I remember seeing the little box wrapped under the get tree and I'm like, Oh, that's it. You know? <laughs> and I wanted to that's my slinky, the metal slinky. I love that thing. And, um, and I have, believe it or not, still I have to this day, I have um, Weebles, the original Weebles, which are much oh, smaller yes. than the Weebles they make today. So yes. I have Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, all of them in their treehouse. Oh, wow. I still have the whole treehouse. I still have um, the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse Weeble people and their house, their clubhouse. Oh, wow. I have my uh, Sesame Street houses with all the people mm -hmm. and accessories. I have this one family. I don't know where it came from. I don't remember wanting it. I remember <laughs> wanting the other things. Um, it's like it's a little house and the spot faucet the it looks like grass and then the, it has a spigot and that's the elevator and it's like 
ladybugs and a worm and there's like their family and they turn into ladybugs and they live oh. in this <laughs> underground house I don't have, know where that came from but I must have wanted it or saw it somewhere. Um, I remember I wanted um, categories. I still have that. Uh, not categories. Jeez. Not categories. I remember um, Spirograph. I still have that. I still have my fashion plates. I still have my original Light Bright. Oh, Those are wow. things that somehow survived the divorce and I got them out of the house. And I don't yes. remember how or why. I always used to want to, wanted to have, I wanted to have a Connect Four. I had to connect for at some point yeah. for whatever reason. We used to play games as a family with my sisters and stuff. And that kind of okay. went by the wayside with the divorce, but I had some games. And of course I wanted the cabbage patched out. And back then my mom was a single mom and they were doing the black Friday at Kmart and she went to Kmart and she got some kind of raffle ticket. And then some lady was tired of waiting around and threw her raffle ticket on top of the garbage in the can. And mm -hmm. my mom grabbed it and it was a winning ticket. Get the heck out of here. It was yep. meant to be. It was meant to be. And then she was able to get another one. So I actually got two. Oh, wow. That year. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I had different things from different years that I remember specifically. Mm -hmm. But um, those were kind of my things. Also, the, um, you know, easy bake everyone. Had. Maybe that's where my baking habits started. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had to have an easy bake. <laughs> I bought one of those for my daughter because I never had one of those when I was growing up. So. No, they no. make so many more things now. I'm like, I got chipped. <laughs> yeah, no, I never. I mean, the only when I was a teenager, I think when I was younger, I think like 10 or 11, like I told you, the Atari was the thing that I got. But mm -hmm. after that, I don't really remember all the other gifts that I got. And then the other big gift that I remember was because I, I love music mm -hmm. and I love to listen to music. So I asked for stereo. And ah. then, that was another gift that I would remember opening that I got a stereo. So. I got a stereo from my mom later when she, we were divorced and same thing, you know, you wanted that box stereo and you had to record, put the tape cassette in yeah. to record songs off the radio. Yeah. But you mentioned Atari. My dad got me an Atari. Yeah. And I, I loved my Atari and my parents were divorced and I had to keep it at his house, at his house. And he tried to use that to manipulate me to stay with him. Oh, then and it's I'm not like, fun anymore. Yeah. I'm like, well, you can keep it here. And I'm going home to my mom. Exactly. Because yeah. he thought I would stay for the Atari. Well, he was wrong. <laughs> I'm just not that way. No. <laughs> so, you can't manipulate me that way, buddy. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, I mean, I had an Atari, which I believe my deceased husband's, my deceased sister's husband still has. Oh, wow. Get out. But I wish doesn't... I would have kept mine. I wish I yeah. really I wish that someone would have given it back to me because it was mine and yeah. I would still have it then. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. no, but know. Slinky, Slinky was another one that I wanted oh, to. Oh, I, I took that, that thing. One. Yeah. I took that thing on to people's houses with stairs and ran yes. down the stairs. <laughs> Oh, I used to sing the jingle for it, you know, it's Slinky, it's Slinky, <laughs> oh, what a wonderful toy, <laughs> made for a girl and a boy. And now they don't make them out of metal anymore, do they? No, it's plastic. And I had mine they for a break. long time. I had mine for a long time, the metal one, and he got a kink, and so he never sat right after he, like it's a he, yeah. but it, it never sat right after it always had that little gap from the kink in the metal that drove me crazy, but I had it for a long, long time and I may still have it in one of my containers uh, in the storage stuff. So ah, there I, you go. I, I don't know. I've somehow certain things survived. I don't know how, but I wouldn't yeah. trade any of them. And my kids are like, you never let us play with it. I'm like, no, because you know what? I have all the pieces. I took care of my stuff and I see how you treat your stuff. So yeah, guess what? Exactly. Right. <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> Yeah, oh, no. and my Fisher Price Hospital with the little ambulance and the little Fisher Price oh, people. I, I have remember that too. those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I used to watch all the, that stuff on TV, though, but I never. My sister, I like I said, my sister was the only one really that got like a bunch of toys. She got the Barbies and the um, uh, the Cabbage Patch dolls and all of that stuff. So um, and I just played with her stuff and I was content with that. I was fine. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was a tomboy. I liked my stuff for inside the house, and then outside yeah. I was in the, in the mud, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we shared a room, so everything that was hers was mine. Gotcha. That's the way it worked. <laughs> yeah. Well, I shared with my middle sister, and she was nine years older, so she didn't care what I had. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so she's like, keep your junk on your side. <laughs> That's right. 
don't come on my side. Don't come on my side. I don't want your stuff over here. So, yeah. yeah so that was it. Was What was your biggest regret? And it's kind of always interesting to hear how so many are similar. They are very similar, especially when it comes in the woman's world, because we are um, brought up to think a certain way sometimes. And, uh, and that kind of goes along, you know, like you had mentioned, along with our mothers mm-hmm. who were taught a certain way, which then goes down to us. And yeah. they teach us these it's, ways too. It's that vicious cycle. It's a cycle, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, well, no, so. those were all great topics. And, so. and, great and the Christmas stuff was topics. just for a little fun, just to see what sure, people would say. Course. I've asked other Christmas questions, so we'll tune in for that next week. So. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, I did want to mention something. Um, so before I let you go, one of my friends, actually, the one that we're going to have uh, come on here as uh-huh. a, um, a a guest, she had sent this to me, and I thought that this was the best thing ever. If anybody wants to listen to him, um, he is absolutely wonderful. Um, his name is Trent Shelton, and he's a motivational speaker, but he's not one of like your normal motivational speakers. Okay. He's like real, you know what I mean? Like when he says topics or does topics, it's like, he's being real about it. He's not wearing, you know, the suit and he has all this money and he's standing up on, on, you know, uh, uh, stage and telling you, okay, do this with your life, do that with your life. No, he does everything real. And he tells you how it is. Um, He tells you how to build your best life. He tells you about people who are taking you down in your life. Um, He tells you how to protect your inner peace, uh, stuff like that. And things that, you know, we're talking about here, too, as well on our podcast. I just thought, you know, I would uh, share that to uh, all the ladies out there who need, like, a small little pick-me-up. And, uh, yeah, check him out. Trent Shelton, check him out. I may have to check him out. I mean, it's always, you know, learning. We're always learning. So yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So, so that was it, my dear. Okay. Sounds good. I enjoyed all these topics this evening. I hope everyone else enjoyed them as well. And we thank you as always for listening to our podcast. Um, if you have any suggestions, please leave them down below in the comments. And I will pass it to you. Let them know where we're um, at, where they can listen. You can find us on Spotify, Amazon, Samsung Podcasts, Podcast Index, Listen Notes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, TuneIn, iHeart, and Deezer. All right. There you go. I hope you you all listen. Please um, subscribe. Is that what people are saying? You can, yes. Please subscribe. Ring that bell. Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) (laughs) Please subscribe to our channel. And um, we hope that we get a bunch of future listeners. And uh, it was great talking to you tonight. As always, my dear. You have a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye.